Hello! In this video we're going to talk about discrete and continuous growth models and modeling that with differential equations. So let's start with a really simple model of nuclear fission. And in this model we have a single neutron which hits a uranium-235 nucleus. And when that neutron hits the uranium-235 nucleus it will induce that uranium-235 to split or fission. And so in the process of that fission then there will be two more neutrons sent off, so there will be a total of three neutrons. And so if you go from, say, our first generation, where we just had one neutron, after the first fission event, now we have three neutrons. Well, if you have a bunch of uranium-235 nuclei hanging around, then each of these neutrons can then find yet another uranium-235 nucleus. And as they each find a uranium-235 nucleus, they can cause that nucleus to fission, sending off three more neutrons for each neutron that was absorbed, for a total of nine neutrons at the third generation, and so on and so forth. And so you can see you get rather explosive growth of the number of neutrons in this way, as long as you have uranium-235 around as uh, a fission uh, opportunity. Okay, so in this really oversimplified model of neutron generation from nuclear fission, at every, say, sec one second generation, I know it's not really one second for this type of typical process, but let's just call it one second here. For every one second long generation, each neutron creates a fission reaction that generates two more neutrons for every neutron that you started with. So the change in the number of neutrons is two times the number of neutrons that you had. The change in neutrons, delta n, can be written as uh, the number of neutrons at the n plus 1th generation minus the number of neutrons at the nth generation. That tells us the change. And then solving for the number of neutrons at the n plus 1th generation, that's equal to 3 times the number of neutrons that uh, were in the nth generation. And that indeed makes sense. So if you start with n0 is equal to 1, or 1 neutron, then in the next generation you'll have 3 neutrons, the one after that, you'll have nine, and so on and so forth. So you can easily see how you can calculate the number of neutrons from an equation like this. If I were to plot this as a function of, say, time here, the number of neutrons versus time in, again, say, seconds for each generation, then you see I have this stepwise production of neutrons starting at one, then three, then nine, and continually growing after that. The solution to the number of neutrons at any given generation is actually pretty straightforward to see. You should notice that the solution is going to be n0 times 3 to the n for the number of neutrons on the nth generation. Or starting with one neutron, as in our example, it'll be 1 times 3 to the n. We call this exponential growth because the n is in the exponent. So the n is the thing that's keeping track of time. As time is going forward, that's the number of generations. Uh, and so that's in the exponents, we call it exponential growth. This is what would happen if we had discrete growth of the number of neutrons in each generation, uh, but that's not always going to be a good model for what we're going to be looking at, and in fact many cases we're going to want to think in terms of continuous growth. This might make a lot more sense if, for instance, you had a bunch of neutrons uh, and a bunch of uranium-235, and so these fission uh, reactions happen all at different times, so they don't happen at discrete generations. And so you're constantly having a bump up in the number of neutrons uh, as, at various different times, and so you'll have more of a, what looks like a continuous function rather than this stepwise function. So let's talk a little bit about how we would model this process continuously. So a continuous model for neutron generation might be something like this. So neutrons are being generated at some continuous growth rate, proportional to the number of neutrons, such that after every one second interval, you gain two neutrons for every neutron you started with, or as we saw before, the number of neutrons triples after every one second interval. So let's just take apart this uh, continuous model of neutron generation. So the first thing that I want to point out is this continuous growth rate. What we're going to be modeling that by is now a derivative. So the derivative dn dt is what we're going to call now our continuous growth rate. And it's continuous because it's a derivative now, um, rather than being a discrete change in the number of neutrons per generation. The next thing I want to point out is this bit about proportional to the number of neutrons. So this growth rate is going to be proportional to n, the number of neutrons we have at any given time. 
and we're going to call that proportionality factor R, and we're going to give it a name now. We're just going to call it the reproduction rate. We could probably guess maybe what that reproduction rate is, or maybe have a good guess for that, but rather than do that, let's just solve this first, and then we'll figure out how to calculate that what that reproduction rate is from the information we know. So we can solve this using separability, and we'll find that the number of neutrons at any given time t is equal to n naught times e to the r t. And again, we call this exponential growth because that t is in the exponent. Now there's two things in this solution that we should point out. One is n naught. That's the number that you started with at t equal to zero, for instance. For our example, n zero is equal to one. Uh, but more generally, it's the number you start with at t equal to zero. The reproduction rate r can be found from our known growth rate. And in particular, in our continuous model here, we said that the number of neutrons after every one second interval, say after the first one second interval, should be three. And from that, we can find what that uh, reproduction rate is going to be. So in particular, if I plug in one second into my solution here and using n naught equal to one, I can solve for the reproduction rate r. And I'm gonna be real careful about keeping my units here. And so the reproduction rate r is equal to inverse seconds or one over seconds times the natural log of three. Okay, maybe that wasn't the first thing you thought that it could be when you were thinking about the reproduction rate. It was natural to think of that as being maybe three, but it turns out we need it to be natural log of three in order to get the right growth rate after one second. So using that reproduction rate r, I can plug that back into my solution for n of t to get now n of t for any time. So it should be one for n zero equal to one times e to the inverse seconds times natural log of three times t. That's not really the prettiest solution that we've ever seen, uh, but we can actually make it look a lot nicer if we do some manipulations with logs and exponentials. So let's remind ourselves of some of these tricks of logs and exponentials. In particular, one thing to remind yourself of is that if you have something multiplying a natural log, you could bring it into the natural log as an exponent. Or more precisely, if I have say t natural log of three, I can write that as natural log of three to the t. We have something that looks a little nastier in our exponent for n of t. We have inverse seconds times natural log of three times t. Let me first reorganize that so that's t over seconds times natural log of three. That looks a little nicer. And then that whole thing that's multiplying natural log of three, I could pull inside the natural log as an exponent. So now I have natural log of three to the t over seconds. The next trick I want to remind you of is if you have e to the natural log of something, then you just get the something. So e to the natural log of a is just a. Or again, in our case, we're gonna have e to the natural log of three to the t over seconds. Yeah, that's a lot of exponents and fractions going on. But ultimately that just simplifies to three to the t over seconds. And that's looking a lot nicer than what we started with. If we use both of these tricks in our solution for n of t, we should get a comparatively nice looking solution for n of t, which is one times three to the t over seconds. I want you to compare this to what we just saw on our previous slides for the number at each generation when we modeled this as a discrete system, where the number at the nth generation was one times three to the n. And we can see that these actually are telling us the same thing of how many neutrons we're gonna have at any given amount of time. They're just having writing it in different language, whether we're doing a discrete or a continuous model. And indeed the plot that we had before, the continuous line is indeed the solution that we have here, one times three to the t over seconds. And we can see that it exactly reproduces the right amount of neutrons at the start of each generation. And so this is one way to think about the relationship between discrete and continuous growth.